do you contend for your breakthrough? How do you contend for it? How do you attract breakthroughs in your life? When I talk about contending, I'm talking about a fight. But the fight we are going to talk about here is a noiseless, noiseless fight. Right? Where you know how to operate the word of God. So that the breakthrough you've been looking for will come to your door. And the Bible says here something very important. That if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask whatever you desire and it shall be done for you. To me, that's a very strong statement. Very strong indeed. As a matter of fact, it's one of the statements you can just be reading the Bible and you forget it and you don't see the power in it. But look at that. Jesus said, the secret of having your prayer answered is here. That if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. So who is doing it for you? It's God doing it for you. And we are asking God, do it for us, oh God. We are Waking up 5 o'clock in the morning asking God, do it another time, oh God. We are believing you for a miracle. We are believing you for a breakthrough. We want to see your grace upon our lives. Jesus said, the answer is here. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. Here you can see that Jesus didn't say, and I abide in you. He said, and my words. That's how powerful the words are. He could have said, if you abide in me and I abide in you. He said, if you abide in me and my words. Because you cannot abide, God cannot be abide in you in any other way apart from through his word. You know, when we talk about the word of God, the word of God is very, very powerful. As a matter of fact, the Bible says it, it is sharper than any two-edged sword. In Hebrews 4.12. Very strong, powerful than any two-edged sword. God relied on this word to create the world. He knew that the word would deliver. And when Jesus came on earth, he knew that the word of God would deliver in our lives. So what did he do? He said, if you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. That's strong, isn't it? There is no one else who can talk like that apart from Jesus himself. No one else. There is no human being on earth who can tell you that if you listen to me, you follow what I'm doing, God is going to do it for you. No, it's only God. And that's why he said that. So when you look at the matter of abiding, abiding, if you abide in me, if you abide in me, and my words abide in you. You will do. You will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. So how do you abide in the word? How do you abide in the word? Because we can talk about this and that's why we need to do Bible studies. In fact, this will be more of a Bible study than a preaching. How do you abide in the word? How do you abide in the word? Number one, I would like to tell you this one thing. Yeah? That as beautiful as this word is in the book. Right? And as you read it. It potentially says what belongs to you. This one tells you what belongs to you. That means this is like a, a potential promise of if you follow this, what will happen to you. So if it is in your, in your Bible and in the book and in the, on the shelves and it is not in your heart, it cannot be able to help you at all. And it is only the word that is in your heart that can be able to help you. It is only the word of God that you know that can be able to help you. Not the one that is in the Bible. It is only the word of God that you follow and you practice that can be able to help you. Not the word that is in the Bible. So the fact that we have beautiful Bibles, study Bibles, everything, iPads, tablets, whatever we have, and we don't study those things, they don't help us. You can have so many problems yet. The promise is in your house. It's just like you can have so many problems and you have got a check of 10,000 pounds in your pocket. If you don't cash it, it can never become money. Same case with the word of God. If you don't 
follow the word. And if you, if you don't practice the word, and if you don't read it, you can never, ever get help from the word of God. So, how do you abide in the word of God? First of all, you abide in the word of God by meditating upon the word of God. Meditating. This is where you read the word of God, study it, and meditate it. Study the word. You read a scripture like the one I've talked about here. And you, you think about it. You meditate it. The Bible says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask whatever you desire and it shall be done for you. Now, saying that and repeating saying that and that cannot help you. Can you imagine? It cannot help you. But if you meditate on it, think about it. And you let this word of God become a part of you. You have, you have thought about it so much. It has become a part of you. A, 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 a part of you. It you perform wonders in your life. Now look, how do you meditate on the word? I'll tell you three easy steps of meditating on the word of God. Number one, study the scriptures concerning the field that you need a breakthrough. Study the scriptures. Study them again. If you need scriptures on healing, study them. If you need scriptures on marriage, study them. If you need scriptures on parenting, study those scriptures. When you study those scriptures, Settle down and think deeply about those scriptures. You must have thinking sessions in your life where you can sit down and you have a session of thinking, of meditating. This is where you let those scriptures sink in your heart, sink in your spirit. This is when you allow the, 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 the scriptures to be digested in your spirit man. Remember the scriptures are like food. The Bible says it's like the, the, the milk of the word. Let the scriptures dwell in you. Let the scriptures enter your heart. It's just the same way you eat. But the, before the food gives you energy, the food must be digested. You give food some time to be digested. It's the same way. Give the scriptures time to be digested in your life. And when the, the scriptures are digested, now speak the scriptures. So, study, think, speak. Study, think, Meditate upon the word of God. The Bible says that those who meditate upon the word of God, they shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of the living water. Give me Psalms chapter 1. Verse 1. They shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of living water. Why? Because of digesting. How do you digest? Study. Take those scriptures from the Bible. Right? When you take those scriptures from the Bible, put it in your heart. Let them sink. By meditating and thinking about them, then speak what you have studied. Concerning healing, speak what you have studied. Concerning families, speak what you have studied. Concerning your life, speak what you have studied. Concerning finances, speak what the Bible says concerning your finances. The Bible says, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of the sinners, nor sits in the seats of the scornful. Go ahead. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. Did you hear? This man delights in the word of the Lord. When you study, the law of the Lord is the same as the word of the Lord. Okay? In his law, he meditates. In his law, in the word of God, this man meditates upon this word when he wakes up in the morning, when he goes to bed, when he's eating, when he's driving, when he's, he's having meetings. You meditate upon the word of God. So the word of God becomes a part of your life. Then what happens next? He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of the living water that brings forth its fruit in its season. That means he will be a man of breakthroughs. You want breakthroughs in your life? Meditate upon the word of God. Meditate upon the word of God. Meditate upon the word of God. The Bible says he will be like a tree planted by the rivers of the living water that brings forth its fruit in its season. You will never fail to bring fruits in season. You will never fail to be having breakthroughs. Whatever happens in your life, at the end of it, you see a breakthrough. Why? Because now you'll be operating not by the power of what people think about you, not by the power of what's happening around you, but by the power of the word. Our sister told us that there is, there is a dunamis power here in this house. What is dunamis power? The explosive power of God that causes things to happen. It's explosive power. And in order for you to experience that explosive power of God, it comes from the word. You see, the way you see heavyweights lifting, these guys who do heavyweights, lifting big metals and big weights. 
Because they have special diets. Did you know that they don't just eat what we eat? They have special diets. It's the same case with you. If you want to see breakthroughs in your life, special diet of the word. That means you are a student of the word. You meditate upon the word of God. It is only the word of God that promises that you will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. You will never know dryness in your life. And I declare in the name of Jesus Christ that you will not know dryness in your life in Jesus' name. And also says, whose leaf also shall not wither. Whose leaves, you know, leaves, leaves, leaves kind of uh, show us the things that can be seen. You see, your life will never wither. You'll be always moving forward. You'll be always making progress. There will always be a change in your life. And the Bible says, and whatever this man does, prosper. Everybody is looking for prosperity in one way or another. Not only in finances. You want your family to prosper. You want your health to prosper. You want your marriage to prosper. Every area of your life. Those listening to me from different places, you want your marriages to prosper, your ministries to prosper, whatever you are doing, your projects to prosper. The secret is given. Meditate upon the word of God. Contend for your breakthrough by meditating upon the word of God. How do you abide in the word of God? By meditating upon the word. When you meditate upon the word of God, you wake up early in the morning. You study the word. You sit down quietly. Think about that word. Speak that word. Write notes about that word. Let that word be assimilated in you. It, be, it will become a part of you. Right? And the Bible says that those people who meditate upon this word, they shall become like trees planted by the rivers of living water. That brings forth its fruit in its season. Whose leaf also shall not be that. And whatever he does, whatever means everything that you do. Everything. Now, the problem is that mankind likes to look for shortcuts. This looks too good to be true. Too good to be true. That the Bible is saying you meditate on the word and you become prosperous. I, I, I don't think so. I think working hard makes you prosperous. Here we are talking about God-given prosperity. Not man-made. God-given. It, it comes forth by meditating upon the word and making sure that you prosper God's way. Somebody say amen. So, meditating upon the word. There is power in meditating upon the word of God. It is one of the ways to abide in the word. So that you stay in the word and the word stays in you. You stay in the word and the word, word stays in you. The miracle of the word takes place when the word dwells heavily in you. When you are grounded and rooted in the word of God. Not the word that is in the Bible, not the word that is in your notebook, but the word that is in your spirit. Spirit. Give yourself a challenge sometimes and tell yourself, I'm going to write down 50 scriptures. No, no, let, me, let me not go from 50 to 50. Yeah? 20 scriptures without looking at the Bible. 20. You know what? Memorize them, keep them in your heart. Meditate upon them. Speak them out. Because there's a time that you go through challenges in life. And what will be needed in your life is not the Bible. You, you need to speak out what is in your heart. You need to speak out the, the, the scriptures that are in you. Because there are some circumstances which will not listen to your knowledge. They will not listen to your experience. They will not listen to your education. Not even the money that is in the bank. There are some challenges in life that can only listen to the word of God that is in you. Not the word that is in the Bible where you go and say, let me go and look what the Bible says. You don't have that time. There are times you need to shake yourself during a certain circumstance and just speak the word. And where is that word? It is the word of God in you. The word of God that is in you. So study the word. Think the word. Talk about the word. Study it. Think it. Talk it. Put the word of God in your mouth. Put the word of God in your mouth. When circumstances arise, put the word of God in your mouth. Talk about it. You remember what God told Joshua? This book of the law shall not be part of my mouth, but you shall meditate upon it day and night. You see? To speak what it says. You see? This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. Not from your heart. From your mouth. That means as on the journey of life, Keep on speaking the word. And you can only speak what is in your heart. True or false? Because the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. You cannot speak what is not in your heart. So God knew that Joshua is loaded with, with the word because he was with Moses. 
And Moses was a man of the word. He wrote the five books, yeah? He was a man of the word. Now, he knew if Joshua is going to have a progress in life, he must talk the word. Joshua, I know you have studied the word. You've been with Moses. You have thought about the word. You have meditated it. Now, I want you to speak the word. So in the journey of life, keep on speaking the word. Keep on speaking the word. In the, in the, in the body of Christ, we've got so many spiritual obesities. People who are loaded with the word, they know the word, they know the word, they study the word. Every day in the morning, in the evening, during daytime, wherever they go, they study the word, they study the word, they study the word. But when it comes to releasing the word, they don't release it. Right? The power of the word will always be act uh, activated when you speak it. Never forget that. You activate the power of the word by speaking it. You can have a lot of that power we have had today. Dunamis power. The explosive power. But unless you trigger it and you release it through your mouth, it will not have any effect. So, speak the word of God. Come on, somebody say, speak the word. Speak the word. So, you dwell in the word by meditating upon the word. And we said meditating is study, think, talk. Study it, think it, talk it. Another way you abide in the word, another way of abiding in the word is by doing the word. Doing the word. Many people may say, I obey the word. God has commanded us to obey the word. You cannot obey the word without doing it. You cannot obey the word without doing it. And if you fail to do the word, it will not have any impact in your life. That means you will not be having any breakthrough. I believe in helping the poor. Do you help them? I believe in all the blessings that come by tithing. Do you tithe? I believe in serving God. Do you serve? Do the word. What the word say, do it. I believe in doing, doing, a, doing a, a good person. Are you a good person? I believe in peace. Are you a peacemaker or you are causing trouble everywhere you go? I believe in this. Do you do it? Do the word. James chapter 1 verse 21 says something very, very important. And I want, to, I want you to look at it. James 1 21. It says, huh? be doers of the word. Okay. Therefore, lay, all the field, lay, lay aside all the filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your soul. Yeah? Receive this word. This word has got the ability of saving your soul. If I te start teaching this, it's a, it's a whole topic, this one, all together, this one. Yeah? Let's go to verse 22. But be doers of the word and not hear hearers only, deceiving yourself. So, receive the word. Did you hear that? Receive the word. So, you have meditated the word. You have read the word. You have meditated it. You have uh, spoken it. And now things are working in your life. You got it in you. Now, do the word. Be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourself. Now let me tell you. If you become a hearer of the word only, and you don't do the word, you'll be deceiving yourself. There is nothing as frustrating as Believing in prayer, you don't pray, then you expect a breakthrough. Nothing as frustrating as that, as that. So, when the Bible talks about prayer, pray. Do the word. When it talks about fasting, fast. Do the word. Whatever the Bible says, do the word. That's how you abide in the word, by doing it. That's how you follow the word, by doing it. There are some instances in the Bible where some people had to do the word for a miracle to take place. And I can tell you today, if you say you are a believer and you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, if you don't do the word, you will be frustrated because you think that God's word doesn't have power. But it is you who is not doing the word. In Matthew chapter 14, we got a story of a man by the name Peter. Peter saw Jesus walking on water. You remember that story, isn't it? And he saw, they, all of them thought that this is a ghost. But it was Jesus. And Peter looked at Jesus and said, If it is you, tell me to come. Give me verse 28. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. Not to come to you through any other way. 
Jesus, is it you walking on the water? Yes, it is me. Now, if it is you, Peter is sitting on the boat here, a man of the word. He had been with God. He had been with Jesus. He had seen miracles taking place. Now he has seen something else he had not seen before in his life. And he said, we knew you as a healer and we knew you as a deliverer. We knew you as a, as a man who could uh, heal the sick and cast out demons. We knew that you could raise the dead, but we didn't know that you can walk on water. So if it is you, Jesus, tell me to walk on water. Something new. How many people want to do something new in their lives? The word of God. Do the word. And Jesus said, let's go to verse 29. And he, so he said, come. C-O-M-E. Come. Immediately Peter heard that. <laughs> and when he had he, and, and, and when Peter had come down out of the boat, you know what? Can you imagine the college that he jumped off the boat and he's stepping on a 50 meters deep lake. That lake is 50 meters deep. He stepped on the waters. And the Bible says, and when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. So what did Peter do? He acted on the simple instruction, come. He did the word, come. He walked on water, going to where Jesus was. I know some people here are thinking, but he started to sink. We don't want to go to the area of sinking because we will not sink in the name of Jesus. He sank because of faithlessness. Yes, faithlessness will make you sink. As far as he was walking on the word, come. C-O-M-E. Come, C-O-M-E, come. As far as C-O-M-E, he was walking on water. God will give you some very simple instructions in life. Very simple. That means when they are so simple such that sometimes you don't believe they are, they are real. You expect, God, I expected you to give me two pages of instructions and you are just telling me to come. Some people, sometimes God will tell you, go. Sometimes God will tell you, accept it. Simple instructions. But as far as he was doing the word, things were working out. And I pray that things will work out in your life in the name of Jesus. If you make a decision to become a doer of the word, that's one of the ways of abiding. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. Come, jumped off the ship, the boat, started walking, walk, walk, walking on water. And the Bible says, and Peter walked on the water to go to Jesus. And he did. He did. Simple instructions, acting on the word. In John chapter 2, Jesus went to a wedding. And when he went to a wedding, the wine ran out. And the mother of Jesus said, <laughs> they have ran out of wine. Jesus said, what? What do you want me to do? It's not my time yet. They have ran out of wine. Then he called the waiters and the waitresses and told them, Shh, whatever he tells you to do, do it. Verse 5. His mother said to the servants, whatever he says you to do, to you, to you, do it. Whatever he says to you, do it. That means act. On the word. Do the word. It doesn't matter. So, you know, some people are praying machines. You know, praying machines. Yeah, you will wake up at five o'clock and you'll be like, Laba kataya ka sandaya. Ho, 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 ho. Let me tell you, you just say, ho, 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 ho. If you are not ready to do the word, if you are not ready to do the word, you will wait for a long time. You will wait. The secret of the word is by doing it. Be ye doers of the word and not hear us only deceiving yourself. And every time you ask God for something, he will give you an instruction. Are you ready to do instruction? If you are not ready to do this instruction, when you are waking up tomorrow for prayer, sleep. And that's why some people are sleeping because they don't want to do it and we are fine with that. Sleep. Don't wake up. Because God will always give you an instruction. Are you ready to do it? You know what we are told these guys, yeah? 
The mother said, mother, the mother knew who Jesus was. I think maybe he had seen a few things. She had seen a few things in the house. You never know. Because like, there is no one in the house, yeah? And we've got about 2,000 people. Ah, this would be a shame in the wedding. Now, whatever he tells you to do, do it. Do it. And then she left. You know what he said? Bring the, 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 the pots. The ceremonial cleansing pots. They were dirty pots. All right? For ceremonial cleansing. That means that's where people used to wash their feet when they are going to, to, the, to, to, the, to the synagogue. Yeah? And these guys have been walking in places you don't want to know. Right? And then he said, fill them with water. And they fill them with water. Then he said, open it and taste it. And they tasted. And it was the best wine. Now, what are we trying to say here? He was checking for obedience. Can you trust God with the smallest and the slightest instructions? People are, people are ready to question the word when it is spoken even by God or by the, by the word. A certain waiter could have said, Hey, Jesus, you, you tell us to bring uh, clean containers. We don't want to do food poisoning here. You are telling us to fill the pots for uh, ceremonial cleansing and people are going to be sick everywhere here. We don't have any doctors around. Some people like to question everything that God is saying. And that's why they are delayed in life. Some prayers have not been answered for many years because we like questioning. Did Peter question anything? He just jumped off the boat and started walking on water. These guys didn't question anything. You know what? They just filled the water pot. And you know what? They had a party in that place. And one of the greatest miracles took place that day, changing water to wine because of doing the word of God. Because of doing the word. So God will give you instructions, but be ready to do instruction because you cannot say that you are abiding in the word, yet you are not ready to follow instructions. And you know what? It is easy to pray. And it is easy to come for prayer meetings. And it's easy to be on the prayer line. But the problem is doing what God says. Simple instructions. Now, when you read something like this, yeah, that Malachi chapter 3 concerning finances, that test me in this and see if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing to you that you have no room to contain. You read that and then you are asking the credibility of tithe and offering. He said in the Old Testament or in the New Testament. He said for the today's generation or is not for today's generation. He said for pastors to eat or is for the church to buy, to, to, to support the church. He said for God in heaven, he does it, I want my money or is for this and that. Now, you are arguing over a thing that is opening your widows of heaven for you. Arguing. It's so, to some people, it's better for them to stay in poverty than give that 50 pounds out of their tithe, out of their 500 pounds pay of part time job. It's better for that. Why? Because we are created in a way we like to question everything. When it comes to the word of God, the word of God is law. And God will test you in the matter of obedience. Obedience. Doors of heaven, widows of heaven, widows of heaven. It is only mentioned twice in the Bible. Where there was, a, there was, there was this uh, famine in Samaria. And the prophet said, tomorrow at a time like this, there will be so much lard in the, uh, food in the land. That means there will be an inflation. And one of the guys said, even if God opened the widows of heaven, it cannot be enough. You know what? God destroyed that man. And you know what? There was inflation in the land in 24 hours. God can cause inflation in your life because of just listening and obeying the word of God. And may that be your portion in the name of Jesus. Now, here we see that man said, even if you open the windows of heaven, the only other place it's spoken is here, that God will open the floodgates of heaven. Some people say the windows of heaven. Floodgates. Floodgates are the windows. That means it's like there is a flood Oh, in heaven full of blessings. Now, the flood gate is where you open and the flood can be 
can be released to go to the other places. May there be a flood in your life, flood of finances, flood of blessings, flood of breakthroughs. We are contending for our breakthroughs. The message here is contending for our breakthroughs. May that be your portion in Jesus' name. We are talking about doing the word. Somebody say doing the word. Let's do one more. In, in the book of Ezekiel chapter 37. Ezekiel 37, yeah? Something happened in, in the book of Ezekiel. What happened? There was dry bones. There were dry bones which were very many and very dry. Representing, the, representing a, a kind of... Um, kind of lack of establishment, kind of um, the bad situation, things were not working out. People are scattered everywhere. Hopelessness. And the Bible says something very, very important. That God said to Ezekiel, can these bones live? Ezekiel said, hey, only you God knows. You know, there are times you don't want to tell God, yes, they can live or they don't live because uh, you don't want to show faithlessness. So he said, only you, God knows. You don't know this problem, but God, you know, if he can live. He was a clever man. God said, now, speak to these bones. Prophesy to the bones. That means, speak the word of God to the bones. What God is telling Ezekiel is that, I want you to, uh, to, to do the word. So what, do you, what are you going to do? I will say what to say to, to do. Then you repeat after me. So he said, tell this, uh, say these things to the bones. And he told him the information that he wanted him to pass to the bones. Verse 7, and the Bible says, So I prophesied as I was commanded. Where do you get the command of what to say to your situation? From the word of God. So, when you are leading the word of God, what you are simply doing is that you are getting instructions. When the trouble comes, what do you say? When you go through the valley of the shadow of death, what do you say? Though I go through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for thou art with me. Where did you get it from? I read it from the Bible. Psalms chapter 3, verse 23. When you are going through shame, and things are just about to bring you to a place of shame, you speak and say, they looked at him and they were not ashamed. And their faces were radiant. Where did you get that from? From Psalms 93, verse 4. When you are crying and things are hard and bitter and everything. You say, waiting me and joy for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Where did you get that from? Psalms chapter, first, chapter 30, verse 5. So, you have studied the Bible. You have stayed in the Word. You know what he says. When circumstances arise, you speak what you read. You speak as inspired by the Holy Spirit. Remember the Holy Spirit of God lives in you. Right? So tomorrow morning when you are doing your devotion, it's a devotion, not because you are going through something. But when a circumstance comes up, you'll be able to speak what you read during your, your devotion. So he got an instruction and he was, so, uh, he was told, listen to this. What are you going to do now? You are going to speak to these bones and you are going to command these bones to leave. Command them to leave. The Bible says in verse 7, yeah? Ezekiel 37 verse 7. The Bible says this, yeah? Very interesting. The Bible says. Verse 7. New King James. You know, I'm, you know I'm a New King James guy. So I'm, uh, <laughs> you know what? I, I traveled somewhere and I missed Solomon a lot. You know, Solomon is so fast. Huh? I missed him a lot, you see? I always used to call the guys at the back, Solomon, give me this verse. Sometimes they could delay, take time. Oh, and I said, I wish I came with Solomon. So God bless you, Solomon. <laughs> All right. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was noise. As I prophesied as I was commanded, there was noise. That means there was a less pause. My troubles gave way. When I spoke the word, when I put the word of God in my mouth, there was noise. Everything started to come together. Can I tell you, there are some things which will come together. I'm telling you that you know the word of God so much. You've been coming to this church. Everybody who has been coming to this church is a, is a, is a student of the word. There's no doubt about that. No doubt. That word I've been teaching you, that word I've been setting to you during the weekdays, that those prayer requests, those prayer points. Now, 
when you speak them every day, when you speak them every day, I'm telling you, there are some things which will start taking shape. The problem is just having that prayer in your heart, having those verses in your heart, and you're not speaking them out. Speaking them out. And when you speak them, another thing you need to do is that you need to believe in what you say. Because the word of God is powerful. You need to believe in the word of God that what you are saying will come to pass. The Bible says, there was a noise and suddenly a lattering and the bones came together, bone by bone. There was a breakthrough. Contend for your breakthrough. As I spoke, as I prophesied, there was a noise. When I kept quiet, nothing happened. When I called people, nothing happened. When I thought about it, nothing happened. When I, when, when I went from place to place complaining, nothing happened. But when I prophesied, when I spoke the word, things changed. God is waiting for some people in this place to speak the word. God is waiting for this, so some people in this place to move the, the word of God from the Bible, take it to their hearts, and then transfer it to their mouth. There is power in your mouth. The power of the spoken word. And if you are going to change things through the word of God, there must be that ability for you to be able to speak the word. So how do you abide in the word? You abide in the word by meditating upon the word and number two, you abide in the word through speaking the word. Speaking the word. How many people are ready to speak the word?